Hey everybody, this is Keith from the Mercer County Library System, and this is part two of the 10 steps to create a PowerPoint presentation. Just to quickly review, in the first video, we organized our presentation information before we even started to build our PowerPoint. And remember, it allowed us to easily move our information into the slides. In step two, we created an engaging title slide. We chose an interesting font type, we applied some word art, and we also applied a cool looking background. In step three, we created some new slides and chose the appropriate slide layouts for the information in our presentation. In step four, we applied a consistent design theme across all the slides. And in step five, we went ahead and input our text into the slides. So now in this video, We'll be moving on to the final five steps. We'll be inserting pictures. We'll be applying transitions to our slides. We'll be applying animations to our content and graphics. We're going to rehearse timings. And finally, we'll start our slideshows. So let's get started. Okay, so now I'm back at the PowerPoint presentation I started building in the first video. And now that all my text information has been typed into the slides, I want to continue adding some more pizzazz to really make this presentation pop. So the first way we're going to do that is step number six. We're going to insert some pictures. And since each of these slides, two, three, and four, are talking about a specific type of animal, I think it would be a great, idea, a great idea to add a picture of each of those animals to the slides. Now, unlike the title slide, where the picture took up the entire background, in this case, we're going to be inserting a picture on top of the slide. So again, rather than sort of embedding the picture in the slide itself, we're going to be inserting a picture on top of the slide. So instead of going to the, to the design tab, this time we're going to go to the insert tab. And down here in the images group, I see two options, one for pictures and one for online pictures. So again, pictures is going to allow us to look for pictures saved on our computer. Online pictures would allow us to search for pictures on the internet. Now in this case, I do have some pictures saved already. So I'm going to click on pictures. And that's going to allow me to browse the pictures in my computer. And I see Bold Eagle right here, so I'm gonna click on that and click Insert. And there's the image right there. Now, of course, I will have to move it and possibly resize it to make it fit into the slide. Remember that the four-way arrow that you see here is your cursor to move. Now, if I point out one of these size handles, I see a two-way arrow. And that is my cursor to resize. So first, I'm gonna move it down here to the bottom right where there's some blank space. It's still too big. So now I'm gonna go up to the corner and use the two-way arrow. And remember, whenever you're resizing pictures, it's always best to work in a diagonal direction like this. And then I could just leave it right about there. It looks pretty good. Anywhere you want really would be fine. And notice as I move this around the slide, I get this red dash line. That's sort of an alignment guide just to show you um, where the picture is lining up with certain objects on the slide. I'll drop it right about here. And take note that we do have a special picture tools menu up here. And in this tab, we can apply a, a whole bunch of different effects and other styles and adjust this picture to our liking. But for now, we're just going to leave it alone just as is. So now I'll move on to slide number three and do the same process. I'll come up here to the insert tab, go to pictures. Find the Osprey, insert it. 
Now this one might be a little trickier. So let's see what we have to do here. I can leave it here. I could potentially put it up here, make it a little smaller, all sorts of options. Remember, you could always resize your placeholder as well, if that is necessary. So something like that looks just fine. Again, sometimes these slides take a little bit of trial and error, and you just have to move things around and resize them to get them exactly where you want them. And I'll go to slide number four now. Go to the insert tab, pictures. I'll find the pine snake. I'll press insert. Oh, this one's very big. Let me resize that. And in this case, I have some a nice amount of blank space. So I'm just going to keep it decent size and put it right about there. So now we just added a few pictures, one to each slide, just to emphasize what we're talking about in that particular slide. The pictures are relevant and they really grab the audience's attention and give them a visual aid to coincide with the text information you have in the slide itself. Now this presentation is really starting to come together. Now the next couple of things I wanna talk about have to do with the slideshow that we actually present to the audience. So I'm going to do a quick run through of this slideshow so I can point out where and how we can improve upon it even more. So to do that, I'm gonna go up to the slideshow tab and over here on the very left in the start slideshow group, I'll click on from beginning and it will put it in slideshow mode. So here's my title slide. So now I'll just press a key on my keyboard to go to the next slide. And the next slide, next slide, next. Okay, so a couple of things here. Let me go back to the beginning for one second. So, first of all, I don't like the way the slides just kind of bump right into each other. That is to say the transition from slide to slide could be smoother. I also think it would be helpful to have the text and images come onto the screen when I mention them rather than all at once. Now in PowerPoint language, that is what's referred to as an animation. So let's go ahead and take care of those transitions and animations. And I'll just press escape on my keyboard to go back to the screen here. So the first thing we'll add is, and this is step number seven, we'll add a transition to each slide. Just like with the design theme, we can just use the same transition for each slide. In fact, mixing transitions could potentially be too distracting anyway. So to add a transition, I need to go to the transitions tab. And there's no need to go to your first slide. And the first thing you need to do is just choose a transition. So down here, we have the transition to this slide group. And you'll see a number of different options here. If you click on the more menu here, you'll see even more. And they're grouped by these categories, subtle, exciting, dynamic content. I'm just going to go ahead and click on fade. And what it's going to do is give me a preview. And if you want to see that preview again, all you have to do is go to the left and click on the preview button up here in the transitions tab. Boom. Now the last thing to do is because I want the same transition for every single slide, all I have to do is come over here to the timing group and click on apply to all. And now it's applied that transition to every single slide.
Now over here in the timing group, there are some other timing options which have to do with running this slideshow automatically. I'll be, I'll be coming back to these in just a little bit. Now that I've selected and applied my slide transitions, I'm going to move on to step number eight, apply animations. By animations, I'm referring to the way the text and graphics enter or perhaps even exit the screen. So I'm going to go back to slide number two. And to get to our animations, we need to go up to the animations tab. Now the process to, to apply animations is pretty simple. The first thing we do is click on the first line of text or object on which you want to apply the animation, then select the animation from the toolbar up here. Again, I'm going to apply the same animation to each and every line of text and object in my slides, just like I did with transitions. I don't want to get carried away with too many different types of animations. Now, the order in which you click on each thing matters because that is going to determine the sequencing of the animations once you start your slideshow. So in this case, I want the picture to be the first thing that enters the screen. So I'm going to click on the picture. And notice how once I've clicked on this picture, the animation group is now enabled. Before it was grayed out, now I can actually use it. And it's just like transitions, there are a number of different options, and there's a more menu here with even more options. And again, they're categorized. Entrance, emphasis, exit, motion paths, and even more effects down here. So, in this example, I'm going to just use fly in. So I'll click on fly in. And again, it gives you a little preview. So now I want to apply animations to my text after the picture. So when we have a bolded list like this in a placeholder, it's actually quite simple. All I have to do is click in the placeholder itself. And if I come up here and click on fly in again, notice what happens. PowerPoint automatically applies the animation in order of the, of the bolded list. Okay, and notice here on the left, the numbers next to each, each line of text. And also there's a number next to this picture. We have one, two, three, etc. Okay, that refers to the sequencing of the animations. So this will come up first, this will come up second, so on and so forth. And also notice that where these threes repeat, for example, and these fours repeat, that's because PowerPoint is taking these sub bullets and it's going to group them with the main point here. So they're gonna enter the screen at the same time. Now, if I wanted them to enter the screen individually, Instead of clicking on the placeholder, I would have to actually highlight each line of text and apply the animation one at a time. And then each of those would enter individually rather than in groups. But for now, I like the way that this works out. And keep in mind, you can always resequence the animations if you want to. We can do that either by coming up here to the timing group and clicking on move earlier or move later. You would simply click on the sequence number and then move it earlier or later in the sequence. But perhaps an easier way is to come up to the advanced animation group, click on the animation pane, and on the right, it will show you every object or line of text that has an animation applied to it. And then from here, you can resequence as well. But for now, I'll just click on this X and close this. So what this means is, Rather than appearing all at once, each bulleted item is going to appear on the screen one by one as I click with my keyboard or mouse during the presentation. This gives me a lot of control over the timing and flow of my presentation. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to go to my remaining slides and do the same process. I want the picture first. So I'll click fly in. 
and then I'll click on anywhere in the placeholder and I'll click fly in here. Let me move to slide number four, click the image, and then I'll come here to my placeholder, click on fly in again. Keep in mind, you can apply animations to your title as well, but in this case, I'm going to just going to leave that alone. And I'll do the same thing here to my text in the final slide. Excellent. Now, just like with transitions, there are more options up here in the timing group where this is where I can actually set up my animations to appear automatically, just like with my transitions. But before we talk about that, we need to talk about how we're going to rehearse or time our slides in the first place. Because it's kind of hard to determine how long I want these to stay on the screen or how long I want the animations to last without knowing exactly how long the presentation is going to take in total. So this takes us to step number nine, rehearse timings. Presumably, when you're presenting your slideshow, you'll also be talking over it to the audience. So you might need to know how much time you'll be spending on each slide. One slide might take you 10 seconds, another slide might take you 20 seconds. And for that matter, each individual point is gonna take up a certain amount of time. And They'll most likely all be different. So if you're going to set up your slideshow to run automatically, it's important that you rehearse your oral presentation over the slideshow. That way the flow and the timing work out correctly. Now before I bring you over to the tool for rehearsing timings, I first want to bring up one other bonus tip. And you'll find this in for each slide in your presentation. Down here in the status bar, there's a button called Notes. If I click on it, you'll see at the bottom, underneath the slide, this box came up that says click to add notes. And this allows you to create what's called speaker notes. Now I'm not including this as a separate step because it really is completely up to you as the presenter. But what it allows you to do is type out your oral presentation word for word. In other words, what you will be saying over the presentation. When presenting on your screen, you will see the slide and the speaker notes. That way, if you are allowed to, you can just read from the screen while your audience only sees the slides. You can also print out the speaker notes, which is a great tool for rehearsing, which is why I wanted to show you this right now. To print out the speaker notes, you simply go to the file menu to print. And down here, typically this will say full page slides first. You would change this to notes pages. And you'll see over here, it's showing me it's going to print out the individual slide with the speaker notes underneath. And it's going to do that for each and every slide. So now that you have the script for the oral presentation worked out, whether it's in the speaker notes or just on a piece of paper, it's time to rehearse your timings. So to do that, we're gonna to go to the slideshow tab. And under here in the setup group, we see an option for rehearse timings. So I'm gonna click on this and let's see what happens. So it brought me right to my first slide. And if you look at the top left of the screen, there's a timer going. The timer on the left here is calculating the amount of time for the specific slide. The timer on the right is measuring the entire presentation. So this timer will just keep going until you get through your whole presentation. You could always pause if you need to for a second and then resume. And now this button here allows me to basically restart the slide over again. So I'm gonna actually click on that back to zero. I'll hit resume recording. And I'm gonna wait for this to hit about 10 seconds. 
So we're pretending that this slide takes me 10 seconds to introduce. Now I'll press the key and go to the next slide. And as you can see, it's measuring the time for the slide, but also as I put each animation up on the screen. So that was about three seconds. That was about three seconds. And this is about three seconds. Now, again, if I was doing this in real life, I'd probably be spending more time on this slide. But for the sake of time, I'm just going through each animation in about three to four seconds. And I'm just going to quickly go through the rest of this slideshow. I just want to show you what happens at the end here. Okay, so now that the slideshow is done in this rehearsed timings window, you'll see you get this message that says the total time for your slideshow was 56 seconds. Do you want to save the new slide timings? Now, this is actually a really cool feature because aside from just telling you the amount of time it's going to take to get through each slide, look what else this tool is doing. I'm going to stay on slide number two and go to the transitions tab and look up in my timing group. This advanced slide feature, which was empty before, now says 30 seconds. So what that means is the rehearsed timings tool is actually automatically filling in this information for me. I can always do this manually, but by doing the rehearsed timings feature, it's gonna do it for me automatically. And even better yet, it's gonna be correct because I'm actually talking over it in my rehearsal. Again, if I go to slide three, it's filled this in as well, so on and so forth. And in fact, if I click on the animations tab, just know that even though nothing has been changed here in the timing group for the animations, each animation has been timed correctly according to the overall time of the slide. So now that we've used the rehearse timings feature to accurately time our slides and our animations, we can move on to the 10th and final step, start our slideshow. Now to start my slideshow, I'm gonna move over to the slideshow tab. And over here on the left in the start slideshow group, we can either start it from the beginning or from the current slide. In this case, we wanna start it from the beginning. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on from beginning. Now, once I click on it, it goes into the full slideshow mode. And remember we have those auto timers set up, so I don't actually have to click if I don't want to. Now remember, this slide was about 30 seconds long. Now notice how the animations come up according to the way I rehearsed them initially. Now, another thing to remember is even if you have your slide set up on an automatic timer, you could still advance manually if you need to kind of speed things up. Just hit, I usually just hit the space bar on my keyboard and that will take me to each animation and to each slide. The keyboard acts as an override for the automatic timer. Now, another important thing to point out with the slideshow is remember those speaker notes we were talking about earlier? Well, if I want to, I could see those on my screen. Over here in the monitors group, you'll see a box that says use presenter view. Now, typically if you're using two monitors, one for you and one for the audience, you would simply check this off and you'll see the presenter view. Now in my case, since I only have one screen, I need to do a sort of workaround and 
I'm going to press Alt F5 on my keyboard. And that's going to take me to presenter view. So here it is. And I'm going to just pause this for a second. Now what you see here is the slide. This is what the audience sees. The audience does not see any of this other stuff. Now on the right side of the screen, first of all, it's showing you a preview of the next slide, which can be helpful for you just to anticipate what's coming next. Now let me put this back on and let's see what happens when we get to slide number two. Look at my speaker notes right here on the right. So again, I'll pause this for one more second. So in the presenter view, I can see my main slide here, which is all the audience is seeing. On the right side, I see a preview of the next animation and or slide. And underneath that, the speaker notes for this particular slide. And then again, I could use a manual override to just breeze through the presentation if I have to. And now we're back to this screen. So that was the 10th and final step in creating a PowerPoint presentation. And now I'd like to review the 10 steps one last time. So our first step was to organize our presentation information before we start the PowerPoint. In my case, I used a Word document to type out exactly everything I wanted to put into my slides. I simply copied and pasted that into the slides later on. In step two, we created an engaging title slide and encompassed things like an interesting font type, some word art, and an eye-catching background. In step number three, we began to create our new slides and chose the appropriate slide layouts for each slide. And that depended on the kind of information we were conveying in the presentation. In step number four, we applied a design theme across all the slides and we kept that design theme consistent. Then in step number five, we input the text into the slides. And by that point, we had the bones for a good presentation. Then we, in part two, we came to step six, where we started to really add some pizzazz and flair to our presentation. The first thing we did was insert pictures. And we had to just move and resize those pictures a little bit to get them to where we wanted them in the slides. In step number seven, we applied transitions to all of our slides. And remember, we only used one transition for each slide, just to keep it consistent and not too distracting. In step number eight, we applied animations to all of our content, all of our text, and all of our graphics. And again, we only use one animation style because we didn't want to get carried away with too many different animations. In step number nine, we rehearsed our timings, which allowed us to really nail down our oral presentation, but also set up the automatic timers for our transitions and our animations so they were accurate. And finally, in step number 10, we launched our slideshow and we saw what it looked like in presenter view so that if you have those speaker notes, you could simply read from the screen and deliver a great presentation to your audience. So these were the 10 steps to create a great PowerPoint presentation. I hope these two videos were informative. Thanks for watching and good luck to you if you wanna try PowerPoint on your own. Take care.